Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Micron Insight 2018. Brought to you by Micron. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante, he's David Floyer, and we're covering Micron Insight 18. It's all about bringing together artificial intelligence and the memory and storage requirements. We're here on the Embarcadero. We got Treasure Island that way. We got the Financial District over there. We got Golden Gate Bridge behind us. Tom Eby is here. He's the Senior Vice President and GM of Micron's booming compute and networking business unit. Good to see you, Tom. Great and to be Prim here. Primal Savla is here. He's the Director of Deep Learning at NVIDIA. Welcome. Thank you. So obviously, some of these new emerging workloads require collaboration between folks like Micron and folks like NVIDIA, but Tom, why don't you kick it off? What are some of the big trends that you're seeing in some of these alternative workloads that's driving this collaboration? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of what we're talking about um, you know, here today is um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the, the drive of, of AI and, and machine learning workloads um, and the implications for, you know, for memory. Uh, certainly there's, uh, there's a host of them. Um, you know, natural language processing, um, you know, uh, photo and, and image recognition, uh, applications in, uh, in uh, medical, uh, research uh, applications in optimizing manufacturing, like we're doing in our fabs, um, and, and there's you know and there's many many more, um, and of course what's you know what's exciting for us is that uh, to to support those in an optimized way really does require uh, the mating of the optimal uh, you know processing uh, architecture uh, things like GPUs uh, with the right you know high bandwidth low latency memory and storage solutions, and that's what leads to uh, you know great partnerships between companies like Micron and Nvidia. And Primal, uh, David was explaining at our open the intensity of the workloads that you guys are serving, and and how many how many more how much more resources it requires to actually deliver the type of performance. Maybe you could talk about some of the things that you're seeing in terms of these emerging workloads. Yeah. So uh, at Nvidia, we build uh, systems for accelerated computing. Uh, AI and deep learning is a very ex quickly expanding field at this point, which needs a lot of uh, CPU horsepower, right? Uh, what we are seeing is that different applications, uh, like you said, uh, whether it's image processing, whether it's video, whether it's natural language processing, the amount of data that is there that is required to do deep learning and AI around it, we break it up into two uh, workflows. One is the training, where you actually train the software and make it uh, intelligent enough to then go and do inference later on so that you can do go and do, uh, get your, uh, uh, the results out of it at the end of it, right? Uh, and we concentrate on, in this entire workflow. And that's where, when we are looking at it from a training perspective, the GPU gives you the uh, processing power, but at the same time, all the other components around it perform at, at their peak. That's where the memory comes in, that's where the storage comes in, and we need to process that data very quickly. Yeah, so we know from systems design that you got to have a balanced system or else you're going to just push the bottlenecks <laughs> around, right? We've, we've learned that over the years. But so, there's, there, it's more than just slapping on a bunch of storage and, and a bunch of memory, right? You're doing some other deeper integration. Is that correct and what is that integration? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, the two companies have had a great relationship. Um, you know, just to talk about a couple examples, um, you know, we, we essentially co-defined a, a, a technology called a GDDR5X. Uh, which uh, you know greatly enhanced the speed of, of graphics technology. Uh, we uh, we jointly introduced that to the marketplace with Nvidia about uh, about 18 months ago, um, and then you know worked with them again very closely um, on a technology called GDDR6, uh, which is the next generation of uh, of even faster technology, and uh, you know we were their uh, their uh, their launch and ramp partner uh, for their recently announced uh, GeForce uh, RTX uh, line of cards. And it's it's a it's a very deeply engaged uh, early in the process. You know, define the standards jointly. Uh, you know, develop the solution. Uh, you know, very intimate sharing in the in the supply chain area. Um, and it's a you know it's just it's a it's a great relationship for us. And uh, you know we're excited about you know how we can continue to um, you know expand and extend that relationship uh, going forward. So. Uh Obviously there's the two parts of it, you said the learning part of it and the, uh, and the um, inference part of the computing. What, what are you seeing as the difference between the two? I mean, obviously at the end of the day, 
the inference part is critical. That's got to be the very fastest response time. You, you, can't, you have to have that in real time. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing to really speed that up to make that microseconds as opposed to milliseconds? So uh, from an, an NVIDIA perspective, we build the entire end-to-end -to -end sets for uh, training and inferencing. Uh, we have a set of libraries that we have made it openly available for all our customers, all our partners, and all end users so that they can go download it and do the training so they can use the different frameworks and libraries to accelerate uh, the work that they're doing and then transform it onto the inference part. Uh, we have something called Tensor RT, which is basically Tensor Real Time, that gives the capability to get these answers very quickly. Uh, so on our T4 or the Turing uh, uh, chipset that we just announced, we can get a very high performance for our image. Uh, so any kind of image recognition or image processing that we need to do, we can do that on those systems very quickly. Uh, and we can meet, we build entire architectures. So it's not just about one piece, it's up about the whole end-to-end uh, -end architecture of the system. So we heard earlier today in the analyst uh, briefing and the, in the press briefing that Micron certainly in this last 40 years has, has changed. We're seeing a lot more diversity. It used to just all, be all about PCs. Yep. Now there's just so many alternative workloads emerging. You know, clearly NVIDIA is playing there as well with alternative processing capabilities. What do you guys see as some of the more exciting, emerging workloads that uh, are going to require continued collaboration and innovation? Yeah, well I mean, I think to, to, to build uh, a little bit on, on some of the earlier comments about you know, the need for, um, you know, for uh, real-time inference, um, you know, one of the things in, in the area of diversity that we found interesting, um, you know, the, the relationship between um, you know, Micron and NVIDIA in, in high-performance memory really started around their graphics business. Uh, but we are seeing in, um, in other markets uh, closer to the edge, um, you know, in automotive, um, in, uh, um, you know, in networking and in other areas where uh, there's a need for that, you know, that real-time performance, yet there's also a need, um, you know, for a degree of, uh, of cost effectiveness, um, you know, perhaps a little more so than in the data center, uh, that we're seeing technologies like GDDR6 being, you know, applied to a much broader range of, of, uh, of applications like, you know, like automotive, like networking, uh, you know, like edge AI, to provide the performance to get that real-time response, uh, but, you know, in a form factor and at a cost point uh, that's affordable for the application. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd add to that, Kamal? So, I would also add is, uh, you talked about applications, different applications that are changing, right? Uh, today we announced our uh, a new set of libraries and tools for the analytics space. Uh, that's again a big uh, workload in the enterprise data centers uh, that we are trying to optimize and accelerate for uh, for with machine learning. Uh, so we announced a whole set of tools which take in these large data sets that are coming in and applying it uh, in this environment, in, in the data centers, and using it to get answers very quickly. So that's what we are, what, that's what NVIDIA is also doing, is expanding on these capabilities as we're going. And as these components and as these technologies get better, it just gets our answers much more quickly. As execs in this space, and you guys both, you know, you're component manufacturers, and so you sell to people who sell to end consumers. How do you get your information um, in that sort of pull through? you kind of work, I mean obviously you work with your customers very closely. Mm -hmm. How do you get visibility to their customers? You just kind of go to shows, you, you go do joint sales calls, how does that all work? Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly uh, some of that is, you know, in discussions with our customers and their marketing groups about, mm -hmm. you know, what they're seeing from an end customer point of view. Uh, but, but certainly, you know, there's, there's other paths. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the reasons behind the, uh, the $100 million uh, venture fund uh, that we announced today is you know, one of the best ways to get that advanced uh, insight uh, is to be working with some of the most innovative startups uh, that understand what some of those end user needs might be and are, and are developing you know, some unique technologies. Um, and, and so there's a range, you know, working with our customers uh, you know, through you know, Venture Fund and others, but yeah, it's important that we understand you know, those needs because the, the lead time to developing the solutions, both memory and you know, processing architectures is quite long. Of course, everybody wants to work with NVIDIA. You guys get inundated. <laughs> Come on, no, no, we're, we're the most, we're, we're tighter. Now, of course, there's not, not a lot of choices here when you're talking about you know, uh, the, the levels of components that you're selling, but yes. 
What's life like at NVIDIA? I mean, they've been knocking down your doors to do partnerships. So I, I think we've grown from being just a component to now being a complete system and an architecture. Uh, we don't only just build a, uh, uh, build just a chip that the GPU was, we also build uh, full SOCs, we also build the libraries and the software and the tools that are required to make this complete end-to-end -end solutions, right? Uh, and we also do a lot of open source uh, technologies because we want our customers and our end cost, uh, partners to build and take what we have and go beyond what it's capable of. And that's where we add value at the end of the day. Yes, it's all of us together. Um, we need to work together to make that much, much faster as we go forward. Yeah, the tooling is yeah. incredibly important. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is complicated stuff. It doesn't right. just <laughs> work out of the box, right? And so you need an ecosystem as well. Yes. And yeah. that's what you guys have been out building. Tom, we'll give you final thoughts. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, I guess to build a little bit, um, you, know, uh, um, you know, certainly NVIDIA is moving up the stack in terms of um, you know, the ecosystem, the software, the, the complete solution, and I think um, you know, Micron does as well. Uh, you, like you commented, traditionally it was a component play. Um, and you know, increasingly, um, you know, we're going to be building you know, uh, subsystems you know, in memory and storage that, that occurs today on the storage side. Um, and I think we'll increasingly see that you know, in memory and with some of the future uh, very promising technologies like 3D Crosspoint. Mm. Yeah, the gone are the days where you just everybody just you get piece parts and put them all together. They need you guys to do more integration, more right. out of the, uh, out of the box, like you say, subsystem. So, guys, thanks very much for coming to the cube. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back in San Francisco. You're watching the cube from Microsoft, Micron Insight 2018. Accelerate intelligence. We'll be right back right after this short break.